over the, the last eight years, I, I spent a, a good part of that eight years researching and writing this book, uh, White Lama, which is a biography of Theos Bernard, who is one of the pioneers of both Hatha Yoga and Tibetan Buddhism in the West. And it's, it's interesting now to me to uh, just be able to, to sit in a class like this and talk about these high holy teachings and the incredible details of these authentic traditions and be here in the middle of Brooklyn or even to be, if it uh, was in the case for me in, for a period of 10 years, to even be able to do that in the southeast corner of Arizona. It was uh, still an easy thing to do. There are now 18 million people doing some form of yoga in the United States and Canada. And there are 1,800 Tibetan Buddhist centers in the West, in, in North America and Europe. So it's very, with this uh, profound uh, abundance of these authentic teachings that we have now, it can be difficult to imagine really what it was like just 75 years ago when this uh, Theos Bernard, who was a uh, PhD student at Columbia University, decided, as he said, to make a spiritual guinea pig of himself and to travel to India to try to find the last of the, the fast disappearing tantric yogis there. <clears throat> and to, as he said, to see whether these ancient spiritual technologies had any relevance for a modern life. And the uh, twists and turns of his adventure were a remarkable thing to fill my life with for seven years. And it uh, makes me realize, uh, well, so ju I'll just uh, fill you in a little bit on what he had to do. First of all, he had to take a steamship across the Pacific for six weeks, land at the Hooghly Piers in Calcutta, then uh, travel north to Kalimpong. Uh, after undertaking a, a trip around all of India and <clears throat> learning that of the probably hundred or so surviving tantric yogis in all of India, that he couldn't find a single one really that was capable of teaching him both the theory and the practice. And so with the the uh, teachers that he did find there told him that if he really wanted to learn Tantra, the thing that he had to do was to go north to Tibet. And the problem with that, of course, was that since 1792, Tibet had sealed off its borders and no Westerners whatsoever, no, no foreigners, aside from Chinese, were allowed in whatsoever. Uh, but uh, part of the drama of this story is how Theos Bernard was actually was able to get it invitation from the, the highest uh, civil and religious authorities in Tibet to visit there, then received highest tantric initiations from the highest lama in Tibet, and then came back uh, and opened one of the first yoga centers in New York and became a celebrity, and then uh, disappeared without a trace on a return trip to India in 1947. But uh, uh, 1946, he disappeared in 1947. And interestingly, uh, he disappeared while returning from a remote monastery in the Spiti Valley, which is near Ladakh, in uh, extreme northern India, uh, in the Himalayan area of India. And he was uh, bringing back with him some classic, he was doing research and bringing back classic texts on the Wheel of Life. And he was using these, and he had already, since the he opened his first yoga studio and what he called the American Institute of Yoga. Uh, he already in 1937 was beginning to combine Tibetan Buddhism and Hatha Yoga and combining uh, in, a, in a single curriculum. And so he was all, already teaching Wheel of Life uh, to yoga students and, uh, and demanding a, a very high standard of asana practice while teaching uh, both essentially some uh, Hatha Yoga, Pradipika, Tantra, and Wheel of Life. And later then, in 1947, he was the first Westerner ever to get a full transmission of the Lam Rim. From, and he spent uh, 30 days getting a loan from the incarnate uh, 
master the uh, abbot of Drepung Monastery, which is one of the three great monasteries outside of Lhasa. And <clears throat> so he was the first to get this transmission and the first then to write an account and outline of this. And after getting this transmission, he wrote to his father, who was also his primary teacher, that when he returned to the United States, the thing that he saw as the, the great future of yoga was to combine Hatha Yoga and Tibetan Buddhism, and especially Lam Rim, into a single coherent practice. And so it's interesting that he actually never returned from his trip to India or from Spiti. And it's actually only now in the last, uh, <clears throat> you can say really since about 2004 or so, that uh, this idea of really uh, combining Tibetan Buddhism and the meditations of Tibetan Buddhism and Hatha Yoga into a, a single practice form has really been gaining speed. <clears throat> 